nine days since Bournemouth dropped points here to Sheffield Wednesday. It must have felt like the longest nine days in the club's history. But over the weekend, the stars aligned. It's in their hands here tonight. A chance for this club to break new ground under Eddie Howe, who, when he was appointed here back in December 2008, the club were 23rd in League Two, seven points adrift of safety. It has been a tremendous tale. Oh, Andy waiting till last can have its benefits, but it also brings with it its pressures. I do think there is pressure on this Bournemouth side tonight. I, like many others, believe that Bournemouth deserve to get promoted, but there's still a lot of work to do here. We know Neil Lennon, the way he played, the way he manages their fighters. His team will be sat out here very much to be party poopers. Can Bournemouth really focus here and play their natural game? Not easy when you're under pressure. Six years ago, Bournemouth floundering, 17-point deduction that they were seemingly heading out of the Football League. We all know the size of the prize that's await them. If they can win here, won't be assured, but it would take some mathematical, extraordinary event for them to be denied were they to pull three points clear of middles. But as it stands, their goal difference is plus 16. So much talk about Bournemouth, Bolton, Noah here on the back of just one defeat in that last six. They're ten clear of the drop zone, 33 points behind Bournemouth. Well, in these early stages, Bolton going to try and keep Bournemouth at bay, and to do that, they're going to try and get it forward towards Emil Heskey, use him as the big focal point, get him on the ball, playing up against centre-halves. If he gets hold of the ball, he can bring the rest of those midfielders into the game. Real boost for Bolton to have Mark Davis back. He's had a couple of substitute appearances uh, recently. No one's seen much of him recently in uh, the first game for Bolton over the last couple of seasons, really. But he's one of the most talented players in this league. Yeah, I think Neil Lennon will be looking at him and the possibility of, of course, keeping it Bolton. What they can achieve next season is all about next season for Bolton. Neil Lennon came in, he's kept them up. That was his first job, he's done that, he's got to revamp the squad in the summer and then really look to put a challenge towards maybe a top ten, top six finish next season, that's not going to be easy, he'll need players like Mark Davis. He's got Dean Moxie to thunder it clear, Adam Lafondre buzzing around. Pew. Daniels. First chance for Callum Wilson to try and get him behind Ream. Oh, he's got the better of him. Could be a dream start here. Bogdan saves. Bogdan denies. Well, the one thing is a centre half. You've got to be so careful against Callum Wilson. He's far too strong. You're not going to outmuscle him. Ream should just put this into the stands, but you try and nudge Wilson off the ball. It's not going to happen. And Bogdan does really well. He stays on his feet for as long as possible. Good stop. Matt Ritchie. Free kick given. There's Walker. Harry Banner. Dorian David. Lafondra running in behind. And that goes the offside flag. It's an excellent stop from Adam Bogner. Had to be as well. But this is what Callum Wilson does really well. When teammates have the ball, he runs the channels. He uses his pace and his power, just too strong for the centre-half there. Real composure, he will be disappointed. He probably feels as a centre-forward he's done everything right, and he pretty much has. But just watch the goalkeeper, stays on his feet, stays big, and that's why he makes the save. He's only played against Bolton once, and he got both goals in the meeting up at... Macron earlier on this season. Banner. Oh, it took the full force of that. And it's uh, completely Polak's Jan Kermigan for now. Well, the position he plays, he doesn't play up alongside Callum Wilson, he drops into pockets of space into midfield, and that's why he gets one. 
right in the mush. He's going to be fine, the Frenchman, one of the uh, more experienced players in this uh, Bournemouth side. 33, he knows all about the pain of missing out on promotion to the Premier League. Think back a few years with Leicester. Lafondra's head up. Here's Feeney, former, former Bournemouth player, of course. Kermiger, hands there to cut it out. The duel between Ream and Wilson. He's not going to take any liberties this time. Well, he certainly learned his lesson there, Tim Ream. If you're ahead of Callum Wilson, you've got an opportunity to put the ball into the stands. Make sure you do it. Kermigan. Daniels. To Pew. Arta. Sermon. Good, dropping a little deep. There are plenty of white shirts about him. They pack the midfield here tonight, Bolton, to try and keep the Football League's top scorers at bay. Wilson came off Feeney and Bogdan can gather. Well, Dean Moxie this time tries to just step in front of Callum Wilson and pinch the ball. Mentioned already the strength of the centre forward just rushes him off. Keeps hold of the ball, Callum Wilson. Scores lots of goals, breaks them as well. This is why he gets into decent areas. He doesn't overcomplicate his game, he just puts crosses in when he can. Walker, it's come to Heskey, he's offside. Bournemouth's success this season, the back four is very well disciplined, they hold a good line, they do here. Just encouraging Heskey just to step offside, an experienced centre forward, you've just got to step back before you move forward. And the problem is that back four, very disciplined for Bournemouth. Yeah, much is made of their goal scoring power, so they've also, uh, Middlesbrough side, got the best defence in this league. Smith. Sermon, Daniels, and to Wilson, David, Adam Smith. This is a purposeful run from Smith. Moxie came across to close him down. Bournemouth keen to dictate the tempo. It's in from Ritchie. Heskey. Got a few minutes to look at it, Andy. Tell us a bit about the way that Neil Lennon is trying to negate the Bournemouth threat here this evening. And what he's trying to do in general play when the ball's fairly deep. You're seeing Dan's pick up Kermigan, man for man, making it hard for Bournemouth to get it into Kermigan's feet, who's playing off Callum Wilson. I think the three centre halves, they've played this system a few times, Bolton, but there's a lack of communication there. When there's no pressure on the ball, they have to get tighter to Callum Wilson. One of them has to very definitely get tighter to him. He's finding it too easy to break into space. They need to communicate better and be a lot better organised. Such a powerful finish to the season for Bournemouth, who look like they might just be stuttering. They went five games without a win, but they're now unbeaten in 11, winning seven, drawing four of those. Eddie Howe's done such a tremendous job on many levels, but in terms of uh, making his players perform oblivious to the pressure that uh, a chase for promotion brings, it's been quite exceptional.
I say that, but last time here, here against Sheffield Wednesday, your old club, Andy, they didn't have a touch of the jitters late on, giving away a penalty which it seemed might be so costly. Here's Adam LaFondra. That's exactly the link up that Neil Lennon is looking for. Emil Heskey, the big target man, a flick on. And then the pacey LaFondra just spinning in behind him. Towards Heskey, Cook got a significant touch, back to Feeney. David. Dance. Broken up by Sermon, Bannon can find Walker. Goes low, really important that uh, that was cut out before it reached Adam Lafondra. Really good pressure from Bolton, actually, as Bournemouth try and play out from the back, maybe overplaying. Bolton are snapping into the challenges, they're not sitting back on the halfway line, they're engaging Bournemouth high up the field, and that is a good approach against a good footballing side. Now back to Barry Banner. And then again, Davids forward, oh, just wide. Bragg was up for offside anyway against Adam Lafondra. There's the menace that Bolton can bring. It's a really clever set piece, it's nice and patient. It's a very tight call, actually, it's a good ball from Bannon. Slightly nudged at the far post there, Devi. It's a tough call, I think if LaFondra touches that in, the flag will go up. I don't know, he's probably level with Adam Smith. It's a tight, tight call, but good stuff from Bolton, patient stuff. The chance for he nearly came off the back of it. Feeney. Now Pew. Daniels driving forward as he so often does. Pew. Sermon. Wilson spins. Reams able to chip it away. That's good stuff from Tim Ream. When the play develops, he has to get touch tight with Callum Wilson. He was then. That enables him just to pinch that ball and clear it away. Sermon. Let's come back here to Daniels, Wilson, trying to chip it through, Richie, Bogdan is able to block it away, Bournemouth haven't finished yet, they have now, Bannon's got it. A couple of early Bogdan blocks as Bournemouth look for this goal inside the first quarter of an hour that would really settle what nerves there are. I think if that ball had come a bit more cleanly to Matt Ritchie, he might have buried it. Just slightly bobbled, took his time getting to him, had to adjust his body, but again, Bogdan, his positioning was excellent. Arta. Tidy turn by Kern again, looking to release Ritchie, but then we see the pace of young Tom Walker. And the composure. Kendra bearing down, and Elphick. That's a fantastic ball over the top, it looks like a nothing ball, but the important thing is it actually stays in play, it gives Lafondra something to chase. And the important thing with Lafondra, he doesn't foul the centre-half, just jockeys him really back towards his old goal line. Just a poor touch and they get a pretty cheap, uh, cheap set-piece from it. Quickly, Davis. Dance. Davids forward, unmarked, in towards Lafondra. No offside flag that time. It's a magnificent piece of movement from Adam Lafondra. He's on his way before his teammate has even headed this ball. That's the sign of a, a truly great striker. Sermon now. Kyrie. 
Pesky away. Lafondra, the only Bolton player upfield. Pugh. Moxie flies in. Didn't look good. I think it probably looked worse than it actually was, but Dean Moxie made his mind up very early. And Mark Pugh controls this ball, he's going to go flying in and try and win it. I'm sure, at worst, it'll just be a yellow card. It's a brilliant first touch from Pugh just to control that ball. And he's certainly late and he's slightly reckless as well. I'm very surprised the referee's only had a word there. That's surely got to be a yellow. shown by our referee tonight, Mr. Simon Hooper. Bolton have everyone back to defend this one from Daniels. This was a golden opportunity. The header on from Devi is, is decent, but just watch the movement of Lafondre. He's on his way, he's certainly onside. When that ball is headed, he's, just, he's hoping, he's appreciating the ball is going to come his way. He's not standing and waiting for it to happen. He's getting himself into a goal-scoring position. There's an arm on his shoulder, possibly, as well. He was honest, he stayed on his feet, should really have scored. This is the earlier opportunity. Callum Wilson does well just to get his head up here and just poke the ball wide. Just takes a while to get to Matt Ritchie. That means Bogdan can use his pace and come off his line and make a good block. This is actually a ground on which Bolton have a good record. They've won the last three here. And that has been uh, the way that the away side has enjoyed this fixture much more than the home one. The home side's failed to win any of the last seven league meetings. Our guest tonight, Harry Redknapp, was manager here the last time there was a home win. That was back in April 1991. Davis, Walker, a talented team who has caused problems but doesn't get the free kick there. Pew. Daniel signalling where he wants it, but uh, plenty of Bolton bodies back again. Arta. Sermon. Inviting Smith to join the attack. He'll take up that invitation. Well, many talk about the rags to riches story that uh, has been around Bournemouth from uh, the very bottom league to the top. It has been helped by investment. And that's the uh, Russian investor, Maxim Denim, who has helped behind the scenes bankroll this Bournemouth rise. That's the man who has spent wisely. Yeah, I was reading his programme notes, he says they've come such a long way on the back of hard work and having a footballing philosophy they've stuck to, and they really have stuck to it this season. Smith showing a little too much to Walker, but he had the strength to go beyond. He's still full of ambition. Richie now. Arta. Davis. Moxie. Kermigan is taking it away from Dean Moxie. 
Now Sermon. A lot of space down this left for Pew. That look to Wilson. Into an area which is occupied by Mark Davis. Bannon. Eski. Feeney. Walker. Cook. And a drop it in for Richie. And pouring forward here, Bournemouth. Sermon. Now Daniels to Pew. Up against Feeney. It's really good work from the wing back. He's going to have to do a lot of running tonight, Liam Feeney. The open supply lines for Emil Heskey and Adam Lafonja, but get back and virtually play as a right back at times because Bournemouth do love to get their full backs forward. On the midfielder forward here, Sermon. Locked away by Dance. Daniels, Pew, Bournemouth corner. That's the one thing you expect when you watch Bournemouth. They are patient. They will wait to try and pick holes in you defensively. They won't rush it forward. Overturned by Arta. Just over the top by Ann Kermigan. Well, this is what Kermigan does so well. He times his jumps perfectly. Not necessarily the biggest. But he's always on the move, always looking to get ahead of defenders. That's why he gets his head on this ball first, looking to really glance this. And anyways, heads it too well, possibly nudging his back as well. But he is very good in the air. Well, he's such a competitor, he showed that already, Neil Lennon, during his uh, playing and indeed his managerial career, particularly at Celtic. Thrive on the opportunity to puncture this Bournemouth party. Burst the balloon. They're all ready to celebrate here. You get that feeling. They've done so much of the hard work. There's still this tantalizing step to take. You go to Charlton on the final day. Next home league match that Bournemouth play. Who knows who will be the visitors? Might be Bristol City, might be Chelsea. I think Neil Lennon will be very pleased. The first half of this first half has gone well. There's been opportunities for Bournemouth. You probably expect that. They look like they've sorted themselves out at the back bolt and they're making life very hard for Bournemouth to break them down. And at the other end, with Heskey and Lafondre, they always have a threat. Moxie. Dance. Bannon to Dance, the two who were in trouble for some late night shenanigans at the Bournemouth at the uh, Bolton Team Hotel, but uh, since apologised and are restored to the fray here this evening. Bannon, lovely ball in towards Lafondra, who is offside. Well, this looked a tight call again, but he's. That type of player, he finds himself really in between defenders, and that's not by accident. It's a very, very tight call. You look at the, the stripes on the pitch. He maybe should have got the benefit of the doubt there, but he does this so, so well. He just in, uh, drifts in between centre-halves, and that's why he gets on the ball, and that's why goals come his way. And if he scores tonight, it'll be scoring in four consecutive games for the first time since uh, he was banging them in all those years ago for Rotherham, 2008-2009 season.
Askey. Pugh. Smith to Kermigan. Walker. Kermigan tracked him every inch of the way. He's won it back for Bournemouth. Cut up by David. Tussle there between Arta and Lafondra, flailing arms from the Bournemouth midfielder. That's the reason that it's a free kick to Bolton. Well, Bournemouth are finding it difficult at times because it's so congested with those three centre halves. If you try and force the ball into Kermigan or Wilson, the gap's getting closed. And in the wide areas, Walker and Feeney are closing off Hugh and Ritchie, so they're finding it hard really to break through here, Bournemouth. And very strongly on Mark Pugh. And the referee reluctant to give anything more than a free kick. Well, I think Devitt knows that Pugh's looking just to lay this ball off and then spin him behind him. And Devitt says, You're going no further. And to me, Moxie and Devitt should really be booked for the two challenges they've made. That's clearly he's trying to chip, uh, trip Pugh and stop him breaking forward. He should be booked. The challenge of the cynical variety. More for referees trying to let the game flow, but there's certain challenges where you have to produce a yellow card. The players know exactly what they're doing, and that was an instance of it. Sermon in ahead of Bannon, it's back with Sermon, now Kermigan. Kermigan goes for that little chip to the far corner. And he's the one player that might be able to find a pocket of space just stepping off Callum Wilson into the gap between Bolton's back three in the midfield. It's audacious, it's cheeky from there. Just overhits it. In these types of areas, Jan Kermigan can be a very effective player, and he's got that vision, he has the ability normally just to drop that over a goalkeeper. Well, the plan was clearly to start quickly. They usually do, Bournemouth, and uh, get that early goal. Signs that they could have caught Bolton a little bit cold, but uh, aside from Lancashire, have settled. Settled into a frustrating mindset as far as those chasing promotion are concerned. Daniels. Barry Bannon. For Emil Heskey. Heskey, it's taken a deflection and a kindly one for Arta Boris. David, a much better challenge from him this time. passage in the game where Bolton can just take the sting out of the match they have the extra midfielder they outnumber Bournemouth in that central area three to two so they can just keep popping it around and the longer they keep the ball like this it just frustrates the home players and the, the home fans of course Arta to Pugh quickly worked to Carmigan Pugh taken out off the ball there the referee's playing advantage can Wilson take it super stop from Bogdan Wilson's kept it in it's back to Ritchie, Bogdan in defiant mood again. Well, this is a goalkeeping masterclass from Adam Bogdan. This is a magnificent stop. He's actually moving well to his left, has to readjust his body, get down so quickly. But this is brilliant refereeing, allowed the game to flow because Callum Wilson was in on goal and he's gone back and booked De Vee. absolutely right. Well, 
this is a quite magnificent stop. Good ball around the corner from Q. There's the foul, there's the booking. Callum Wilson again, great timing of his run. This is brilliant from Bogdan initially, just to not give a penalty away, but then he's quickly back onto his line. He's actually moving across his goal to his left. Carmigan! Stinging the palms of Bogdan again. Pretty much a one-man show at the moment from Adam Bogdan. Some magnificent pieces of goalkeeping, deserves a bit of luck, possibly gets it there. Just about half an hour played, final home match of the season for Thornmouth. Daniels with the corner. I think this deserves another viewing. Great goalkeeper from Adam Bogdan. As well, just to get his palm on that ball and then get back and retreat to his goal line so quickly. And this is play back to Richie. Strikes it so beautifully. The keeper's moving to his left, readjusts. Magnificent strong wrist, a wonderful save. Off a run for reason or another. Adam Bogdan hasn't been a regular starter for Bolton this season, but. Uh, since the first time he started five games in a row, he stepped up on what is supposed to be Bournemouth's big occasion. And this is a performance from a Bolton side who Blackpool aside have the worst away record over the whole season in this league. Not playing like it here. Kermigan. Davis. by Arta, always Tim Reams to clear, he certainly made that, here's Adam Smith, he was inconsolable here after giving away that late penalty that allowed Sheffield Wednesday to level to make it 2-2. He's having his problems down this right-hand side for, for Bolton. Well, that's a clear yellow card. He got away with one earlier as well when Pugh played one round the corner. He left out a trailing leg. And if I was Bournemouth now, I'd be getting that ball out to Mark Pugh, running at Dorian Devee every time he gets it. Eski. Still a powerful unit in the air, Emil Heskey. Beat taking it away from Pew. Davis. Feeney. Nearly 100 games here, Liam Feeney under Eddie Howe. Again, shoulder to shoulder, Wilson and Ream. Richie, Harta.
Richie. Hermigant. Blocked by Davis. Now Smith. Here's Arta. Trying to move Bolton around. Create a little bit of space. We found Richie here. Smith, Richie. And slip inside the penalty area from Pugh. It's really good discipline from Bolton. Just keeping their shape really well. They're not chopping, uh, dropping too deep, allowing Bournemouth to play in front of them, across the face of them. And that's where you want them. If they get in behind you in wide areas, they become a major threat. Well, still so many issues. Whatever happens here tonight to be decided on the final day of the Skybet Championship, we'll have two live matches for you from midday next Saturday. Best of the action on Sky Sports 1. Daniels wants the return. Arta. Pugh. Now Daniels. Arta. Ariata. Well, we know what Harry Arta can do from distance. He scored a few classic goals this season. Opens up nicely for him. Neil Downs has to get tighter to him. You can't allow him a couple of yards of space. Normally, he would punish you from there. A really positive play from the midfielder. Just doesn't strike it as cleanly as he'd like to. Green. Well, Carmigan stolen it. If Wilson could get a touch here, it could be interesting. And Moxie did his job. Feeney. Lafondra. Decent ball in. A little glance away from Arta, but this is Feeney. Bournemouth hearts and mouths as their former player set his sights on their current goalkeeper, Arta Borat. David. Cook <laughs> thought that a reverse surge deep into opposition territory. Smith, one of the more regular suspects. Smith. Richie. Beyond Walker. Pew. Pew! That'll do it! That will do it! Pew for Bournemouth! The roof at the Gold Sands is raised! Everyone here knows what that could mean to this football club. 
was a sensational finish. I talked about Bolton doing OK when Bournemouth play across the face of them, but once Matt Ritchie gets in behind them in a wide area, I said it's a whole different problem you have defensively. A little give and go from Ritchie, he's in behind them. Tom Walker doesn't do enough, but how about the footwork here from Mark Pugh? How he manipulates this ball from right to left, quite magnificent. He leads Feeney really standing still. It is an excellent goal, a quite brilliant finish from Pugh. Strengths all season for Bournemouth, the wide players. Richie and Pugh, they combine here, and Bournemouth take the lead. Eddie Howe, who said in his pre-match interview to us he would love to be able to play down the significance of this match, but he can't. It is the biggest in Bournemouth's history, and as we approach half-time, they're winning it. Well, this is what you get with Bournemouth at times, they're very patient, you think, well, they're going nowhere, we've, we've got them. Defensively, we're set up, there's no problem there. Then suddenly, two passes, they're in behind you, a cross comes in, and you're a goal down. Moxie away. This will make very happy reading for Bournemouth fans. Watford already promoted Bournemouth as good as. Look at that goal difference. Plus 17 now. A 17-goal swing required on the final day if it stays like this. Well, one thing you know about Bournemouth, seen them enough this season. They're not just going to, I think, sit back and, and hold on for a 1-0 win. They'll continue to push forward. That's their style. Can't see it changing. They get a second and third here. I think Bolton are done for. I do feel, given where Bolton are in terms of where their season is, in terms of how their squad is decimated by injuries across the board, really, that the first goal will be so important. Showed great defiance in getting close to half time without conceding. And now they have gone behind. Suspect that Bournemouth will be able to kick on, but we shall see. I think Eddie Howe looking at this first half on balance, you'll say his side have dominated the ball, which they have. They've created far more opportunities than Bolton. Bogdan has made some brilliant saves. He will clearly feel his side deserve to be ahead. A club that has never been in the top division of English football in its entire history. Can reach out and touch it now. Banner, Walker. That's one of the real reasons uh, for optimism going forward for Bolton is that they are producing some very talented young players and uh, Tom Walker, who has started now nine games in a row, has been given a real run out by Neil Lennon towards the end of this season. He's one of several either in the team or around it. Wilson. Pass, Kermigant, Richie! They're turning on the style now, Bournemouth! Matt Richie with a really classy goal! Well, this is absolutely magnificent. It underlines just what Bournemouth have been about all season long. Great movement off the ball, great awareness of each other's positions. A really unselfish pass at the death from Kermigant as well. And what a finish for one of Bournemouth's star men, Matt Ritchie. Never expected anything else. But once this ball breaks to Mark Hugh, Bolton have a problem. Callum Wilson should possibly get in, but again, he doesn't panic. He's just he's patient, keeps hold of the ball. How about this for a pass? But this layoff from Kermigant, brilliant. And Ritchie, there's no panic. He just strokes it into the bottom corner. It's devastating from Bournemouth. 
Well, he scored some wonderful goals this season. That one takes him to 13. It is now his best ever scoring season. And this is turning into a one of Bournemouth's best ever nights. Have a check on the table. It's the time of year where we dust off the as it stands table. Even better, that goal difference improves in Bournemouth's favour. We'll see Eddie Howe there congratulating Callum Wilson for his hold up play and his vision to pick out Kermigan. He's praising Kermigan as well for his unselfish layoff, and that's what it's all about for Bournemouth. It's a team game. Okay, Matt Ritchie gets the credit for scoring the goal, a brilliant goal, but the team makes it. when Bogdan was uh, pulling off save after save. Just for a moment, there'd have been a few inside the Goldstone Stadium that would have thought this might be one of those nights. And it might slip away. But yet, of course, but it all seems to be going exactly according to plan as we approach half-time now. Yeah, I think for most teams and most managers, you, you possibly get a bit nervous when the opposition keeper is pulling off brilliant saves, but you've seen it all season long. These two do not panic, their team doesn't panic. They've got a philosophy and they stick to it, and they eventually trust that philosophy to break the opposition down, and that's what's happened here. Green. Kermagant towards Pew. Sands cleared away by Pavit, as far as Arta. Daniels. Significant steps towards Premier League heaven for Bournemouth. Two goals in the last five minutes of the first half. One from Pugh and one from Ritchie. Real goals dripping with quality. And the half-time score at Dean Court, Bournemouth 2, Bolton 0. Well, first thing to let you know about is that there are no half-time changes, so we are as you were in that respect where the Bolton can come back and capitalise on uh, something that has been one of the few weaknesses that Bournemouth have shown this season, and that is giving away leading positions. No side in this division has thrown away more points when they have been winning matches, but uh, at this stage of the season, halfway through their final home game, with everything that hangs on this match, can you see it happening over? Not really, not from the evidence of the, of the first half, but I do expect Bournemouth to start strongly here to go and get a third goal, as Harry was saying there, and really kill off Bolton's hopes. And you probably feel as in a way side, you go 3-0 down, there is no way back, but Bournemouth are a forward-thinking side, they have been all season long, control the nerves well in that first half, can they get a, a killer third goal here? Daniels. Able to seek Wilson, who was flattened by Ream. Advantage play. Let's see if Bournemouth can take it. Daniels. 
That's a brilliant piece of refereeing, great appreciation. And Simon Hooper, just to let the game flow, they could easily have just blown up and given the free kick for Callum Wilson. Appreciated that Daniels is breaking forward, let the game flow, good stuff. Daniels Out by Ream Mighty start from Charlie Daniels There's some fending off that's how the referee saw it I'm not sure that Tim Ream saw it the same way here's Bannon Richie, back comes Walker, still on here, Pew. Goal kick given, and the referee felt that it was carried out by Pew before the challenge came in. It's been a whirlwind start to the second half, and Bournemouth clearly going for the jugular here. A step over from Pew, Does it come off last. It's a difficult one to actually pick out, the referee was convinced it was a goal kick. All really do have to stand firm here because form of the coming on strong looking for that killer third. Lafondra. Strong challenge by Elphick to deny him. He crowded out. And trying to win it back, he pulled back on his man. Yeah, we talk so much about Mark Pugh, Matt Ritchie, Callum Wilson, but the back for Bournemouth, they are so strong. Tommy Elphick, Steve uh, Cook, that centre-half pairing. They started every game, 45 games they played together as a pair, and you talk about strong foundation, defensive foundations, those two, no nonsense, they've been absolutely outstanding, and you can build teams around players like that. You look over the course of the season, and of course this is game number 45 for them. They've conceded 45 goals. Scored well over, double that. They've broken records across the board in terms of their goal scoring this season. All competitions, it's up to 111 now, courtesy of that pair at the end of the first half. Fondra, Caffini, Daniels. That's Heskey at the near post. Still loose, it's Bannon! Reflected wide for a corner. It was a fabulous piece of defending here, just talked about Steve Cook. Just look how close he gets here to Emil Heskey when this cross comes in. 
Bannon is just about to smuggle the ball away from the near post. Good strike from Bannon, it's on target. A bit of good fortune, Bournemouth with the deflection. on him, the Frenchman. to a proud evening for so many who have been on the journey with the club. There's Jeff Mostyn, the Bournemouth chairman. So many have worked so hard in so many departments at this football club to uh, turn what looked like a club heading for the brink and uh, heading towards extinction just six years ago into one that is now heading for the elite. department is uh, backed up by a fierce work ethic and there's uh, a belief in the way they want to go about things in footballing sense Eddie Howe has very much been preaching for weeks as the season has gone on we will not change as the finish line approaches this is Bournemouth and you probably heard him say before the game what I want tonight is a Bournemouth type performance well he's got it so far absolutely it's just interesting if they do go on and get promoted which I'm sure they will what do they do the type of players they bring in and possibly have to sign two or three, but what type of players are they looking for? They have to keep what they've done so well in the Championship, take that into the Premier League, but they will need a couple of players, I'm sure. It's a delightful problem to have, though, isn't it? Heskey trying to provide a problem there, but instead gifting a free kick. It's really good positioning on the cover from Adam Smith here. Up against Emil Heskey, it's never going to be easy. He's going to out-muscle you. A really good defensive position from the right-back, just steps in front of Emil Heskey and is fouled. He was by Kermigan. The referee's allowed it to go on. Pugh looking to take full advantage. It's Fed Wilson. To Richie and back to Arta. Might seem ambitious, but he's banged a few in from that sort of range this season, Ariata. Well, it is optimistic from there. He has plenty of options ahead of him as well, and this is the sign of a good team when you're on the ball. Players who want to take the ball off you, or the space opens up, you can take the shot yourself, and he's had a sensational season. It's led to international recognition with the Republic of Ireland, just as Matt Ritchie is on the ball here, has been uh, called up by Scotland and on his first cap, on his first visit to his country. <laughs> to Arta, Kermigan, beautifully worked again, Pew. Knocked away by Moxie from Arta's effort. As the game is starting to get stretched, Jan Kermigan is finding himself in more and more space. Has that great awareness and vision. He's a devastating player when he's on the ball, he's always looking for those killer passes.
Matthew. Wilson couldn't get the touch. Moxie can clear. Daniels cantering forward again. He covers some ground. Both fullbacks do. Well, that must be the fourth forward ball that Bolton have played, and they've yet to really secure possession. Lafonda and Emil Heskey just can't get involved, can't keep the ball. Bolton can't get up the field as a consequence. Now it's Smith's turn to get forward. Blocked by Walker. Dance. Tom Walker. Smith on his way back, cuts it out. Born the field again. Wilson. Smith. What a work for the Fondra to do here up against Elphick. Well, again, that gives a fairly small centre forward absolutely no chance of securing possession for his team in Bournemouth. Well, at the moment they're coasting through, it's so, so easy for them, keeping possession well. Bournemouth really struggling to get into the Bournemouth half. Eski. Banner to Walker. Too deep for Heskey. And it's not too deep for Feeney, who heads it wide. Well, it's a terrific ball in from Tom Walker, but Liam Feeney has to go back across goal here. Maybe mistimes it, but he's under no pressure. Head this back across goal. Maybe Lafondra or Heskey can turn it in. Well, it might go in itself, but that's just a very, very poor header. Been recognition across the board for uh, what this Bournemouth side have achieved this season. A couple of players, Matt Ritchie, one of them uh, in the PFA Championship Team of the Year that was uh, announced at last night's awards. The other one not featuring tonight. This is the man, Adam Smith, playing in his place. Simon Francis suspended after picking up two yellow cards and a subsequent red here against Sheffield Wednesday. A watching brief tonight, but he has certainly contributed to the cause. We're watching something else on his phone, but it looked, it looked like he was actually asleep. Wilson goes low. Oh, nearly got the touch from Cook. Oh, how has Steve Cook not turned this home? But again, Bournemouth don't just knock that to set piece in aimlessly. They're patient and try something special, and it very nearly works out. I'm not sure how Steve Cook has missed that. Goes actually with his with his right foot. Can let it come across his body and just tap it in with his left. Lafondra, Davis, to dance. Feeney, three in the middle. Now Dance puts it forward, might come to Adam Lafondra. Daniel's able to turn it behind. Well, in general play, Bolton are struggling to create any major opportunities, possibly a set piece could be their route back into the game. Got to send the big centre halves, try and get some quality in here with Tom Walker and put some pressure on that Bournemouth defence. Just about half an hour of play here. Bournemouth leading through those two late first half goals from Pugh and Ritchie. Walker. 
Walker's corner. A Heskey to attack. He was marshalled every inch of the way by Cook at the expense of another corner. It's brilliant from Steve Cook. He knows that where the flight of the ball is going to end up, but he's shoulder to shoulder with Emil Heskey, and that's why Heskey can't turn it into the net. Certainly uh, seemed to be held there. He couldn't make uh, any sort of access towards the ball. That's the point he's making, I think. Yeah, he's trying to go off his line to come and catch it. Is it Lafondra who's just holding on to him, pinning him onto his goal line? If that had ended up in the back of the net, I don't think Boritz and Bournemouth would have been happy at all. And he's experienced much in his. 21-year playing career, Ida Good Johnson, but uh, an evening at Dean Court is not one of those things. Oscar Threlkeld, the right back is going to come on, so you sense a change in formation. No surprise not to see Mark Davis last the full 90, seeing how long he's been out. And Ida Good Johnson is the man who comes on for him. Looks like they're matching up 4-4-2 here, Andy. It does make sense, probably Neil Lennon's thinking, well, we're still in this game, we probably shouldn't be, but we're still in with an opportunity. If we get a goal back, you just never know, so maybe matching up, now playing 4-4-2, gives them a chance of really stifling Bournemouth and possibly, with Johnson on now, creating something themselves. Walker gives it away dangerously, Kermigan. Bokkant, able to tip it over, how about that for an effort? Oh, Bogdan does everything right, he's back onto his line. I think he's hoping this is going to sail way over the crossbar, but this is dropping right under it. The keeper actually does brilliantly, just at the last minute, to stick his palm up. And then I talked about the vision, the brilliance of Jan Kermigan, that would have been some goal. delivery Bogdan it hits him more than anything else scramble just about away Ream can hoist clear they got away with one there Bolton there's a huge opportunity for Callum Wilson comes back off the goalkeeper he's heading hands time for Callum Wilson should be touching his home there just doesn't make a decent connection with it if he had it done it was 3-0 surprise I did expect this even though they were 2 0 up I expected Bournemouth to continue to pile forward and try and score goal after goal it's been the way they've done it all season long and okay they're under pressure here but they 2-0 they can relax slightly and that's always a worry against a team like Bournemouth when they relax they will continue to create chances eventually they will score some more Arta Wilson wants it played in Pugh coming in from the left well, the angle was certainly there for him just to go back across goal. I'm not sure whether he means to try and catch Bogdan out at his near post here. Bob defence backpedalling, they don't get close enough to Pew. Just the poor final connection. And he started the ball rolling with an excellent finish across Adam Bogdan. Just about five minutes before the break. Four minutes, 29 seconds later, Matt Ritchie. A wonderful team goal. Crowned it with an excellent finish. Bannon, who's on loan from Crystal Palace, in towards Walker, who's offside. Well, I talked about it in the first half. This Bournemouth back line very well disciplined. They all squeeze up on mass here. I think they get away with one though. Heskey's certainly offside, but Tom Walker's that ball is played. This is the time he's run pretty well.
Wilson, he's got the pace to get in here. Bogdan comes a long way. Does an excellent job to keep him out. He has been absolutely outstanding tonight, made some great saves, and you saw there great appreciation of where the danger was, and it's a really timely tackle. Richie. Smith being seed to play more man than ball. Talk about determination to get to the ball. Adam Smith here chases this down. It's not the greatest forward ball from Richie. Adam Smith makes it his, gets the ball first, just gets a toe on it, just encourages the challenge. And that's desire, real desire from the right back. Delivery from Richie. Good Johnson. Bannon. Industry from Bournemouth. The Bazaar is there to win it back. Yeah, look at the work ethic there, Callum Wilson. Not just a centre forward who wants to stick the ball in the back of the net and celebrate. He sprints back there to win the ball back for his team. Kermigan. Moxie able to scoop it away. Well, it's good defending from Moxie, that's the one thing you have to be aware of. Certainly the wide players, Pugh and Richie, little give and goes, they play it and then they're on the move. And as a fullback or a, an extra centre half, you have to appreciate that those players are going to run in behind you once they've played the ball. Sermon. David. Referee will let this go. Advantage going for Masway. Wilson's pace has taken him in. And that's a very good looking shout for a penalty, which the referee gives. And he may have more business to take care of here. Indeed, he does. The red card is shown. Bolton go down to 10. Yeah, I don't think the referee's got any choice, but he allows the game to flow. Not for the first time. Really good refereeing. Jan Kermigan, I mentioned him time and time again. The weight of his forward pass, fantastic. That sends Wilson away. And David at the back of Wilson has a major problem. It's a clear foul for me. Again, look at how he plays with his head up. Jan Kermigan picks out the onrushing Wilson. Clear foul, clear penalty. He had been booked earlier, but the straight red card shown for that's infringement on Callum Wilson. Kidology from Adam Bogdan. Kermigan plays his over. The latest twist in the penalty history of Jan Kermigan. Just relaxes a little bit too much here. Is it Bogdan putting him off or is it just simply a poor penalty? He seems to lean back, tries to put it right in the top corner. Takes a bit of a chance. Maybe at 2-0 you can do that. Of course, they have the extra man, so it might not be that costly, but Jan Kermigan, with his ability, he will be mightily disappointed with that.
Very interesting to see the way that Bolton reorganise here. They made that double substitution, sending on uh, Ida Gudjonsson and the fullback Oscar Braukeld. Dancing feet from Dance. Now Gudjonsson. Richie takes it away from him. Tries to release Wilson again. Kermigan. Richie. Smith's on the move ahead of him. Yeah, I just wonder whether Bolt might change to a back three. Looks like they're going to stick with a back four, and Tom Walker's going to have to drop back and play as a left back. And to the right hand side of the field, this looks to be set up for a long range effort from Matt Ritchie. And we saw what Matt Ritchie did against Sheffield Wednesday, that was a bit more central. I still think he might fancy his chances here if they do move the ball for him. He's a fearsome strike, we've seen that already with his left foot. Here he goes, Richie. The power, but not the accuracy on that occasion. Well, he strikes it cleanly enough, but when you walk 30 plus yards out, you have to go for power. It's incredibly difficult to produce that power and keep it on target, always rising. from Bournemouth are so impressive, their 93rd and 94th goals of the season. In their 45th match, about to take them to their 25th win. Walker's delivery. Cleared by Cook. Manners first on the scene. Walker. So quick to crowd him out. Kermigan gets his head up. Has he got the angles right for Wilson? Bogdan just had the edge. You're right about the pressure on the ball. As soon as it's played to Tom Walker, Richie and Kermigan are absolutely flying at him to win the ball back. Bay with 11 men, but with 10, Bolton's task just gets harder. Arta, Pew, back to Arta. Daniels now. Arta. Sure, what was around him, so uh, took the safety first option, got it behind for a corner. Yeah, couldn't take a chance. That's the Jan Kermigan rather than go in on the edge of the six yard box, just held off, hoping the ball might be pulled back towards him. Maybe bogged down with a bit of communication, could have just informed Walker just to let that ball go.
Daniels will help it back to Borax, who for much of the evening has been a spectator. Against the club managed by his former Celtic teammate. Still keeping it alive. Wilson, lovely touch, beautiful finish. Well, it wouldn't have been a Bournemouth night without this fella getting in on the act. Callum Wilson, 23 for the season for him. And that is that. Yeah, Bournemouth take another giant step towards the Premier League. And yet again, what a patient build-up. Talks about it time and again with their goals all season long. They don't rush it forward, they take their time, pick their right passes at the right times. And Callum Wilson deserves a goal, he really does. It's a clever little turn here, could have stepped over this ball. He turns with his left, buries it with his right. And that really does cap a fantastic evening for Bournemouth. Wonderful, wonderful goal. Substitution left available to them. Just uh, in the process of making that ahead of kickoff. In a debut for 20 year old Kane Woolery, who replaces Adam Lafondra. Uh, footballing career is very much entwined with this club. Brett Pittman only fitting he should come on at an hour like this to replace Jan Kermigan. Well, the Bournemouth party has certainly started now. difference that Middlesbrough must turn around on the final day, a mere matter of 19. We can't really say that Bournemouth are up, because uh, it is possible, but there aren't many who will say that they are not. elements of the Bournemouth story is how close they came to the brink six years ago this weekend back in 2009 they won a match here against Grimsby and left them 21st in League Two Steve Fletcher who's got a stand named after him here scored the winner in that match Daniels. <laughs> and a 
chance for the Dean Paul crowd to show their appreciation for one of the standout players in the Skybet Championship this season, not just for Bournemouth, but any club you choose to have a look at, and that is Matt Ritchie. Absolutely outstanding. 13 goals now this season, 17 assists. That's the most in the Championship. Everyone has their, probably their views on the best player in the Championship. Matt Ritchie is mine. Ryan Fraser comes on as uh, Bournemouth launch this one in. I think the man to get on the end of it. Tommy Alford just drifted away from his man here. He Moxie not getting close enough. That's really been the problem for Bolton tonight. They've not been convincing enough defensively. You can't allow anybody centre half, centre forwards, time and space in your penalty area. Charging forward. Oh, oh, oh. How many times have you seen that tonight? Those long forward balls from Bolton. Not quite good enough, but Tommy Elphick and Steve Cook time and again have read the game perfectly. Take the ball down, played it into midfield, and Bournemouth move forward again. Start. Kane Woolery will make up the ground to get on the end of that. Well, the Bournemouth fans are chanting, we are Premier League, waiting for them next season. The champions elect Chelsea, who look to take the next step towards the title, live with us on Sky Sports, Wednesday, 7 o'clock. Yellow card is no stranger to those. I think Hariata saying it was his first challenge. It doesn't matter if it's bad enough, you're going to get booked. And that's a clear pullback. That's always a yellow. Good Johnson. Not a good Johnson. Back to dance. Pittman a little too keen to get on the end of that one. But it proved beyond his side. He will have been hamstrung most literally by so many injuries. Well, there's a lot of work to do. The Bolton manager, of course, who's brought in to keep them in the championship. He's done that. Phase two is to really sort the squad out in the summer. And, uh, get things moving, really try and push on next season. Lots of clubs, I think Blackburn, Forest, Cardiff, Bolton need to improve next season.
goal difference would suggest it's a little early for a Conga, but uh, I'm sure we can excuse them. And you've waited your entire football club's history for a taste of the big time. It's tantalisingly close now. <laughs> Wilson. Daniels. Pittman. Waits in the middle. Pugh couldn't get the touch. It's kept alive, though. And Arto couldn't find that bottom corner. There's an apology there. He probably should have released the pass. It's 1-0 or 0-0. He probably does pass this ball, but at 3-0 off, you've got the luxury of trying to score yourself. He's trying to be too precise, probably took it right in the bottom corner. He just overcooks it. Van Gosling has had a season punctuated by injuries, been on the fringes. He's only made one appearance since January, but he gets another run out here. Final couple of minutes of Bournemouth's home campaign. Well, Mark Pugh certainly deserves a round of applause as well, not just for the opening goal, he got the ball rolling tonight, but his performance is season long, have been absolutely outstanding, like Matt Ritchie. Those two wide players have been so effective for Bournemouth. Well, it's always going to be a struggle to keep Bournemouth out when they create that many opportunities and they work your goalkeeper that much. Inevitably, you're going to get beat. It's a save, 3-0 down, all those attempts on target. Adam Bogdan has had a great game. Eski. Worth reminding you as well that uh, Bournemouth have missed the penalty through Jan Kermigan. The damage could have been greater. Well, if Eddie Howe was thinking last night, how is this game going to go? Ideally, what would I want? I don't think this is far off the mark. The level of performance has been absolutely outstanding. They've mirrored really what they've done all season long. They're deservedly going to go into that final game in a very, very strong position. They are Premier League bound. And they have played brilliantly tonight. To put on a show when the pressure is on takes a special type of character. And that is what Eddie Howe has instilled in his Bournemouth side. That is why they are where they are. It's only their fifth season in their history at this level. Finished 10th, fell short last season. This season for so long, longer than anyone else. In fact, they've set the pace at the top. Slip here last time out against Sheffield Wednesday allowed Watford to capitalise and uh, force the issue as others slipped at the weekend. And now we're down to a matter of seconds, 180 seconds away from an all but confirmed place at the top table of English football. And all the wonders that brings with it. Already, how will tell his players just to keep the handbrake on a little with their celebrations at the end. Whether they'll be able to, the fans certainly won't. Arter's on the move. Here's Fraser. Out by Reed. Arta. Still Harry Arta. Finish wide by Callum Wilson. 
Well, the reaction tells you this must have been pretty close. Just thought the chance had gone. Harry Archer had held on to it too long. And as well, Callum Wilson to open the angle up for himself. And they possibly just clipped the, the crossbar as it goes wide. Johnson. The supporters not waiting for the final whistle as Bournemouth's footballing dreams come true. A stylish and emphatic win at home here against Bolton has taken them to the threshold of the Premier League. They are effectively there. It will take record-breaking and fantastical final day. Mathematics to deny them a 19-goal swing. Jeff Mostyn and Bournemouth can celebrate. They've taken that final step and they've done it, Andy, here in real style. Absolutely, quite extraordinary scenes. You can't begrudge these fans celebrating. OK, mathematically, Bournemouth aren't up yet, but come on, they're a Premier League side. They deserve to be too. Absolutely outstanding all season long. Outstanding tonight. They could have had seven or eight. Three is certainly good enough. A brilliant performance. Maxim Denim, the Russian investor there almost in tears when he invested in the club it was to save it now the next home game they play here in the league they'll entertain one of the big boys in the barclays premier league such a wonderful tale that has happened so quickly fueled by the footballing dynamism the thought of the one of the youngest managers in the game eddie howe his fans dreamt that they could get to the premier league well he's delivered and they've done it by scoring the most goals, winning the most plaudits, perhaps not winning the most points, but they will contest on the final day with Watford as to whether they can win the title. Most of the times when there have been pitch invasions here, it has spelled a final day escape or something of that ilk. The club's survival against the odds, against administrations this evening it's all about celebrations for the impossible dream. No one thought that Bournemouth could take this next step. Little Bournemouth from the footballing backwater. Well, just look at these scenes. You go back six years and they were battling to stay in the Football League, and that is a very short space of time to turn a club around. And credit to everybody connected with Bournemouth. The fans have certainly played their part, sticking by their club. They've got a great manager, a young manager, but a brilliant manager, some fantastic players who will be a credit to the Premier League. They might have to add one or two, but they're certainly going to play attractive football. The philosophy at Bournemouth will not change now they're in the Premier League. They may have to send out a search party for one or two. <laughs> Being absorbed by the adoring crowd here, Harry Arta carried shoulder high. The plan was to have a parade and a celebration after the match, a show of thanks from the players to the support, traditional in so many clubs at the end of the season. It's going to take a long time, though, not just for the players to get back to the dressing room, but for the fans to get back to the stand. A wonderful and memorable night, an historic night here at Dean Court, as Bournemouth take the stride they needed towards the Premier League. Final score, Bournemouth 3, Bolton 0. Jeff Marston taking the applause from... Uh... Eyes betraying some of the emotion that Bournemouth are feeling tonight and why not as Harry Arter continues to try and negotiate his way through the crowd. He's being held through, cameras absolutely everywhere, pictures will be all over social media over the next hour and into tomorrow as well. But why not their 25th win of the season's goals, number 93, 94 and 95, the top scorers in the championship and now they are all 
but in the Premier League, but let's be honest, they are there. The goal difference is plus 19. He's been brilliant this season. Bournemouth have been brilliant this season. Harry Redknapp, the former Bournemouth manager, alongside me. Harry, did you ever think you'd see the day, hear the day, when you would hear, we are Premier League? No, it's just fantastic, Simon. They thoroughly deserve it. They've been absolutely amazing all year. The football, what you saw tonight is what they've, they've produced all season. It was just an absolute pleasure to come and watch. You're absolutely spot on because if people hadn't seen any of Bournemouth yeah. tonight, I'm thinking, well, they, they've played because tonight they're on the verge of the Premier League, but no, they've done it from every start week. To finish, every week they? they score goals. They, you know, they go away from home. They've scored five, sixes away from home this year. They play fantastic football. They're a real, real credit. You know him. What's it going to mean to him, Jeff? Martin? Jeff, yeah, Jeff's the chairman, and uh, obviously he'll be delighted tonight. Very, very happy. You know. Um, Everybody's played a great part. The owner, you know, has put his money in, he's supported the club, the chairman, chief executive, but Eddie has just done an amazing job. A fantastic young manager, and he's brought players in. And the thing is, they've not spent big money. No. They've not, you know, the, the, the two centre halves have come from Brighton, the left backs come from Leighton Orient. They've all, they've all come, you know, the right back, Francis, who didn't play tonight, was suspended, has come from Cholton. You know, the little outside right has been at Portsmouth, Swindon, Pewey from Hereford or somewhere. But the signs were there, though, weren't they? Towards last, the end of last yeah, season, they put that doubt. run, we yeah. wonder if they're going to get in the playoffs. Yep, yeah. they the, beat the us in last year, QPR, and, you know, I looked at them and I thought, you know, they're a good side, and I certainly felt this year they could, they could make the playoffs, but to, to make automatic promotion, it's just been an incredible achievement. And everybody here tonight, this is, you know, the best team in the history of Bournemouth Football Club. These players here, they deserve the freedom of the city. Eddie, Eddie deserves to be the Lord Mayor or something, you know? <laughs> he may well be. He probably so, will so be. He may well get the freedom of Bournemouth. He deserves it. Uh, who knows? But there, there's, there's Max in Denver. There's Max. Yoda. He looks low. Looking a bit worse for wear. Might have been enjoying some hospitality. I think, I think they've all lived, yeah. Your words, not mine. Just a bit of conjecture. Just it, but he, he's, he's loved he, it. He deserves it. He's done a great job. He's come in here, you know, moved into Bournemouth, got involved with Eddie Mitchell in, you know, buying the... Him and Eddie took the club forward. Yeah. Now he's took it on and he's done a great, great job here and he deserves so much credit for what he's done. All I can say is I hope he remembers this evening because these Bournemouth fans here will, because what a journey they have been on. Six years ago, this weekend just gone, they were scrapping for their very Football League survival. They are now celebrating the Premier League because they closed the gap on promoted Watford to a single point, which means the title race does go down to the final day. Watford with that inferior goal difference, they're at home to Sheffield Wednesday. Bournemouth are away to Charlton.